Hey guys, Luck here. Quick video to show you how to brakes and rotors on a Toyota Camry. We are doing the rear. I already have a video for the front poster, so check out my channel, the link below for that. Uh, this is a 2012, but the idea should work probably 2011 all the way up to more recent models. So you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a 14 and a 17 millimeter socket to remove the caliper housing that holds the, holds the pads and the rotor. Uh, you're gonna need some brake lubricant, uh, brake, brake caliper compression tool possibly to compress your uh, caliper, I'll show you that. You're gonna need new rotors and brakes. I'm using these Detroit Axle from eBay. I got a whole set of these, four rotors, four brake sets of brake pads for the whole car for 160 on eBay. That's a steal, uh, no complaints about, about it. Just nice standard set. So that's what we're gonna be using. You can go higher grade as well. Power Stop is a great brand if you wanna upgrade. Uh, Rock Auto is a good place to get that. Anyway, let's get started. So first, with the 40 millimeter socket, we've got to remove these two bolts. Those are the guide pins that hold this uh, caliper assembly to the bracket here. So one here, one here. We're gonna pop this off right now. Now we can pop off this assembly. This is the piston we gotta compress with our compression tool. For now, get a clip or a bungee to hold this so it doesn't fly away and damage your brake line. Here are our pads. Pretty good condition, but we're gonna replace for new ones as we did the other side. This was the other side, completely gone. So if you were doing just the pads, this is as far as you go. You pop the new pads on, you put the assembly back on, and you're done. Since we're doing the rotor, we gotta also take off this assembly right here, and that's the 17 millimeter socket. And it's these two bolts over here. One over here, and one over here. So we gotta get those off now. For this, you might need a breaker bar or a gentle tap with a hammer. Save your bolts. I'm gonna clean all this up and get it ready for the new setup. Now we can just now we can pop up the rotor. If the rotor is jammed, this is a rear. Remember, make sure you don't have your handbrake on, as these things we pushing against your rotor and holding it in place. Sometimes you might have to give it a tap with a hammer as well if it's really rusted on. But in this case, as you see, no rust here. This was pretty good. If there is any rust over here, just get a metal brush, brush it all off so we have a clear connection when we put a new rotor on. And it's good to wear a mask too. You also want to grab and clean up the piston from any possible rust. As all that can just cause squeaking lid on your pads. Next, we also have to compress this as with new thicker pads, they won't fit in here. So you can use this compression tool. All you do is put a pad in here like this and squeeze it. Or in this camera case, you can just get a wrench and just push it against it like that. Same idea, but let's do it the right way. You can even shove a screwdriver between the rod and the pads when it's still installed and that will um, give you the same idea since we're changing the rotors we don't have to worry about damaging anything and you can compress it all the way as we're going to pump the brakes after we finish of 
later. Now we can get our rotor ready. So unless your rotors are coated with anti-rust coating, stuff like that, some power stuff rotors do that, they are gonna have oil on them. You wanna clean this oil off, that's, that's not good for the pads. Brake cleaner, inside and out. And wipe it all up. This area you don't have to worry about as that doesn't come in contact with the pads. One thing I started doing just to prevent any rusting and the rotor season up to this hub, I started using anti-seize lubricant. This is completely optional, but if you can, use it in just a little bit. Don't put any on the lug nuts, that's gonna mess with your torque settings when you put them back on. And we can pop our rotor on now. Pads next. So before we in reinstall the bracket, we gotta clean this up as well as the clips, unless you're replacing the clips. Since these clips still look in good condition, I'm gonna reuse them as I did on the other side. So just get your wire brush and clean everything up. Now same with the clips. You also want to clean up the guide pins. They pop out and wipe them up. I'm going to re-grease them first brake lubricant to make sure nothing jams. Make sure it's popped back in in here. Same with this one. Just like that. Now we grease up our clips in a bracket and this is basically what prevents any brake squeaking when you get your brakes done and you hear squeaking that means somebody forgot to grease and the vibration for uh, between the metal and the pads causes the squeaking you put in the grease anywhere there's contact points back in and this is where the pads are going to sit so I'm going to grease this as well make sure you don't have too much grease you don't want to have excess because then you're going to have just collect and break dust forward with the installation. So first we get our bracket on with the two 70 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna grab a torque wrench and torque this down to the specific specs. Now we can install our pads. Make sure you don't touch it on the pad surface that touches the rotor and keep that clean. We're gonna grease this back 
that's any connection points here as well as these tabs here just make sure you don't put too much either and they just slide on between the clips so that's the connection point you want greased up there we go and we're doing the same on the other side here too just in case we don't put on the pad as well as back here and now we slide this on over the pads that's why we have to compress it and we can put our 14 millimeter bolts on And now we just torque this down to your car specific specs. And it's that simple, rotors and brakes replaced. Now we just gotta put the wheel back on, drop the car, close your uh, brake fluid reservoir and pump the brakes. And you gotta break them in to prolong the life of your pads and make sure they're breaking evenly. I have a video on brake bedding as well. You can check that out in the link below or on my channel. And one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning was when you jack up your car, make sure you're using a jack stand. Once you pump your brakes, everything should be nice and tight. Nothing should be wiggling now. All right, guys, and that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope this video was helpful. Any questions or comments, please comment below. Uh, I'll be happy to answer as quick as I can or somebody else will. Uh, check out all my other videos related to car repair, brake jobs, and so on. I have plenty on my channel and other how-to videos. Appreciate your support, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you.